Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about gluing components to things. So components we've talked about before. There's other videos uh, on the channel. Component is uh, a, a, an instance of a set of geometry that is linked to other copies of the same set of geometry. Uh, the nice thing is when you change one component, they all change. Um, but we're not going into that necessarily. What we're going to talk about is a feature inside of a component when you make a component called glued to. We're we'll talking about how it works and uh, how to make the most of it. All right, so I got a couple of shapes here. Um, simply put, I got a box and I have a half a cylinder here with uh, some lines on it. We're gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna start by, we're gonna create a quick window component. This is gonna be very, very simple. I'm gonna put a rectangle right like that. Uh, let's uh, push, pull it up. I'm gonna offset a little bit and I'm gonna push, pull this down. All right, so that's it. This is, like I said, this isn't about modeling windows. This is about modeling or about uh, glue two components. So I'm gonna grab all of that, triple click, right click and say, make component. So when this comes up, there's nothing special here. Uh, I'm just gonna call this a glued window. Cause you know, you can install a window by just gluing it to the wall, right? And then uh, there's two things that have to go with this. So when I, when I create a glue two, I wanna make sure I set up these two things. Um, I'm not really worried about this other stuff. We're not going to talk about cutting or or face camera or anything like that. We're going to look at glue two and set component. So when I click glue two, I have a couple options here. Any, horizontal, vertical, or sloped. This is a window, so this should only go into vertical walls. So I'm going to click vertical. And then I'm going to click set component axes. Now this is one of the spots where people run into problems. That is, they try to do things like model their windows up on the wall or which makes sense. Um, the best advice I can give, the easiest thing I can say is when you model your thing, model it flat on the ground. So even though this is gonna get turned up and be vertical, I wanna model it like it's laying on the ground next to the house I'm building. And the component axis is going to be on that flat surface, the surface that's gonna be glued. And in this case, it's already choosing lower level, lower left corner. And you can see when I'm hovering over it, see that flat, that gray box, that, that flat surface there? That's showing me where it's gonna glue. That's kind of like the, uh, the sticky spot before the peel the cover off. So that looks good, I'm gonna click there. All right, so we have a vertical, second point axis, I'm gonna go ahead and say create. So it does create a new version of it. So this right now is that component. I can also always go to components. That's the way I like to do is click right here and then I'm dragging it in. So now when I hover over the wall, see how it aligns vertically? I come around the corner, it's gonna pop over there. If I go to the horizontal, it lays flat. Now this looks like it's snapping flat to the top, but it's not. If I look, look at my cursor right now, I got that anti sign, the no-no sign. That means I'm not doing this right. If I come here, I get the little move cursor here, I get a no. Um, same thing if I go to the bottom, it's just, it's just laying flat in its original orientation. It's not actually snapping the flat. So if I come over here to this dome shape, if I come along here, you can see none of these are flat horizontal. So none of them get snapped to because that's not an option on here because they're not vertical. If I come here, sure. But any of these faces, nope, don't get to do it. So what do we do about that? If that's what it's supposed to do, that's, that's good. That's great. If I want to change it so it snaps to any face though, I can always come here and select it and hit edit, and that's gonna give me those options again. So I can say rather than vertical, let's make it any. All right, and then we'll come back in, I'll grab it, and when I bring it over here, snaps flat, snaps flat, and if I go up here, boom, snaps flat. And if I go around my half dome, look at that, or half cylinder, I guess, it snaps to those two. So that, simply put, is glue to. Now, Here's the thing that's gonna happen. We're, we're not done, we're, we're getting into it, but that's the basics. Now, here's the thing that happens sometimes. When I go to, oops, what if I put this on the wrong wall? It's supposed to be on this wall. So I'm gonna go grab it to move it, and I come over here and it does some weird snapping stuff, like right? So I just want it to go flat to this wall. I want it to go flat to this, go to this wall. It won't do it. In fact, if you turn sideways like this, you'll see that no matter where I move it, it's staying in plane with that wall that it was originally glued to. So this is one of the things glue two does. Glue two <clears throat> takes the surface that it's on and locks the component in plane with that surface. So if I wanna remove it off of the wall, anywhere other than in plane with that wall, 
have to right click and hit unglue. Once I do that, now I can take it and I can move it wherever I want. But if I want to glue it again, probably the easiest thing is to grab the original component and snap it back in here. So it probably would have been easier just to delete that and then put that one there. All right, that's pretty cool. Windows are easy, they're flat. Let's talk about something that goes on a not flat surface. Um, let's say this is the hull of a boat or an airplane or something, and I wanna put some rivets in here. I wanna be a little cartoony, I apologize. I wanna, I wanna put big rivets in here, right? So like one, two, three, four big rivets here, and a couple coming down the curve. I want it to be very obvious that this is a, a riveted together uh, piece of, I don't know, aluminum? Metal, whatever, I don't know. It's gonna get rivets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna real quick, I'm gonna draw a circle on the ground, and then I'm gonna draw a much smaller circle right here. This is gonna be my actual rivet. Take the big one, I'll say tools, follow me with the little one, and that's my actual rivet. All right, so there we go. So this is going to be my rivet. What I wanna do <clears throat> is I wanna make a component, a gluing component, from the center of the sphere that I can drop onto geometry. So to do that, I'm gonna do a couple things. One is if I come in here now, right? And I say, okay, select all, whoops. Select all, right click, make component. I can say glue to, glue to any. But when I go to set my component axes, I don't have a point to snap to in the middle there. See, it's gonna to snap to all my surface points, but I can't like inference, even if I turn X-ray and see inside, there's not a point to snap to. When I go to create my component axes, I have to snap to a physical point. I can't just pick uh, an inference point. Like, you know, if I was, I might be able to inference between here and here or something like that and get that snap point in the middle, but I can't do that when I go to place. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna grab a line, I'm gonna draw my line from the peak to the bottom like that. So it's gonna create a whole bunch of geometry, but the important thing is that I have that line right there. So when I do come in here, right click, make component, glue to any, set component axes, and let's go inference the middle of that line. I'm gonna click there two times. All right, and we're gonna call this a rivet. And I'm gonna create it. All right now that I'm done, this is a component now, but I have all these things on the inside. If I get rid of that extra line, all those faces go away. So I'm down to just, oops, I got one extra face in there. I guess I need that one. All right, let's turn off x-ray. And there's our rivet. If we come out here, this is gonna be riveting. I'm gonna click and place it right there. See how that worked? The cool thing about, and look at, look at how it looks like, because I made it a circle rather than a half a circle, I'm gonna be able to place it anywhere on this curve. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use move maybe. And I'm gonna say stamp, and we're just gonna come stamp some of these along a straight line. I'm inferencing a straight line. That's great. And then we're gonna come down this curve a little bit like this, right? So I'm gonna come down to here, maybe here, uh, work our way around here. And I'm not, I, I admit, I did not inference that very straight. I'm just kind of clicking some things up here. All right, there we go. We got some rivets. It's my first time riveting. I didn't go straight in here. Again, it's glued to, so I can only move along that face. Now, here's the cool thing about this. Because we made it a sphere, we're placing by the middle. If I go to view in geometry, I can see where the breaks are. <clears throat> see where it laid flat? Perfect, I have a half a sphere here. Where it hits a line here, because we're using the whole half a sphere, it's actually coming down below like that too, because I got that extra geometry on the inside, which is great. Same thing here, lapping over, no problem. <laughs> Now, the downside of this, of course, is if I go back to my view, turn my hand geometry off, uh, I don't have white lines here, or I don't have lines there where it meets, right? It's just white where they overlap. What I could do is I can come in here to this group, select this face, right click, intersect face with model, and that'll get me little breaking lines there. See that? See how it gives me those lines? That's great. So that, that way, if I want it to look like that, I can still drop those in and make it look like they're all riveted, all connected together, but they're not necessarily. I'm gonna undo that real quick because I would do one more thing. I wanna leverage the fact that this is a component. So I'm gonna come in here. Whoops, I guess I didn't, I didn't have replace component on there. 
So I'm gonna grab, grab one of these and drop them in here. I'm gonna come into this component. I'm gonna select it all and delete it. Then from that origin point, I'm gonna grab a polygon, draw a six-sided polygon, about that big-ish, pull it up like that and close it. Now, this is a component. It is placed by this point. So if I come in here, it's the bottom there. And all those rivets I placed before are, are replaced with that geometry. And I can see how it just laid those same components in for that same point. So these ones are gonna be a little off because the way they were designed. And this one I can see, I couldn't see this when it was a sphere, but when I moved it around, I accidentally rotated it. So uh, I'll delete that and then just draw a new rivet. New rivet or new uh, hex head rivet, is that a thing? I just made it up. But there you go. So that's leveraging components inside of a glued to element to make a change. I could do the same thing with windows too. I could come in here, uh, you know, I don't know. If I wanted to make this a wider window, I could always make that change like that. And that'll be reflected across the other instances of that component. So there you go. Snapping to or gluing elements. Let me try that all over again. There we go. <laughs> Gluing components to other elements is just that easy. So I hope that you got something out of there. I covered a couple things. I really wanted to talk about glue to, and I don't know, I've, I've hit that thing where I glue something to on accident and then I can't get it to move off and it drives me crazy. Why is inferencing not working? Uh, anytime you have that, especially with imported components, if you go grab something off the 3D warehouse, you don't know if glue to is turned on or not. So when you drop it in, everything seems fine, but then we go to move it, you find out it's glued, it happens. Um, but now you know to look for it. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's other things like that that you have used glue to for. I'd love to hear it. I mean, windows, skylights, doors, those are the kind of the big ones. But I know there's other things out there, and I'd love to hear how you use it. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Let us know of a different use case for this. Let us know if you're struggling with this. Let us know if there's some other workflow in SketchUp you think would make a good video for us. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.